That, my friends, was Justin Robert Young. How do I click it off me and make it more the person that's talking? Uh, it, if, you're, if you've clicked yourself, yeah. then you just click yourself again, and it'll turn itself off. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen who are watching this at youtube.com slash ace detect, I'm not going to say you're doing it wrong. It would be judgy. But the official channel of Daily Tech News Show is now youtube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. The show will post automatically there as soon as we're done streaming it. So you'll get it faster. YouTube.com slash Ace Detect gets the Daily Tech News Show when lazy old me gets around to re-uploading it later on. So just mm -hmm. let you know. And those of you who are on YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show who are tired of me telling that, I'll stop eventually. Don't worry. If you don't want it right away, you could just wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. If you're, if you're getting it too fast, Daily Tech News Show. That's right. Yeah. There's, no, there's, a, there's so, another option for it. There you go. Remember that. All right. Shall we record this audio podcast? I think we should. All right. Let's for posterity. For great posterity. For great skull. <laughs> Here we go. The Daily Tech News Show was brought to you today by me. If you would like to bring it to someone, visit patreon.com slash acedetect. That's patreon.com slash A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, June 25th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, as he does often on a Thursday, although he's in quantum superposition, he can show up on any day. Justin Robert Young, how you doing? Man, I'm a rolling stone. I gather no moss when I roll around the DTNS calendar. Uh, you know, wherever I lay my hat is my home, and other songs from the '60s. Yeah, for the for the full compilation, see Justin Robert Young's Twitter account, twitter.com/slash Justin R Young Hits. And joining us also is I as Actar of CNET.com fame uh, and host of Top Five, a fine show. Yeah, it's a good show. Uh, I'm glad it was just sitting there waiting for me. Some guy steeped made it. Steeped so, uh, in history, that show. Yeah, it's steeped in tea as well. Steeped in tears. <laughs> That's what that show is. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's actually great. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. I couldn't be happier, uh, if anybody doesn't know, I started CNET Top 5 many long years ago. Hashtag uh, humble brag. Brian Cooley, Donald Bell, now Ayaz Akhtar. I mean, they've just topped me every time. As well, yeah, every, I, I plan on being the first host to get the show canceled. So keep <laughs> watching, folks, because every aims. episode could be its last. Aim high. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at some headlines, shall we? And Gadget reports that Yahoo has partnered with Oracle to get users to try out Yahoo's search engine as part of their next Java update. The update uh, comes with a pre-checked installation box to make Yahoo the default search engine. Yahoo says the onboarding process is, quote, highly transparent and gives users choice. If this sounds familiar, Java and Yahoo toolbar installation have a storied history. And I don't know, man. I thought Marissa Meyer might put an end to these kinds of tricks and chicanery, but I guess not. Well, you just got to protect that market share, right? Like at some point, there is going to be a question on where Yahoo Search is since it is the lifeblood of the company. And if they do not show hard numbers, then there is a problem. And Marissa Meyer, although she is beloved by the press, is not bulletproof on the Yahoo board. No, and then she was talking to the board when she announced this. So this, this does uh, somewhat, I don't want to say anything smelly but it seems as if maybe this is a sop to cr critics uh, who are getting impatient with yahoo's turnaround sop it up folks zdnet reports that iphones on the t-mobile network have been hit by a blue screen of death what how could this have been done According to the reports, iPhone 5Ss, iPhone 6s, and iPhone 6 Plus devices running iOS 8.1 or 8.3 on the T-Mobile network are being affected by freezes, restarts, and crashes. The issue is being blamed on an update pushed to the device to enable Wi-Fi calling. Several possible fixes have been suggested, including disabling Wi-Fi calling, disabling voice over LTE, or disabling LTE altogether. You could also hard reset your iPhone, delete old text messages from the past few days, and factory restore your iPhone using iTunes. However, 
Users report mixed success. No word yet on whether or not Apple or T-Mobile will pin this failure to their coat and wear it around the town square. Yeah, no word. You know, maybe I haven't been paying attention, but I don't think anyone's called this an uncarrier move. But nobody's done it. I've you just it. uninstall your carrier and it works. They're an uncarrier. I can, I can tell you that because this right here in my hands is a T-Mobile unlocked iPhone 6 that I use on the Verizon network. None of these problems. Mm. Oh, over at Microsoft, they revealed a new desktop wallpaper for Windows 10, according to The Verge. The default Windows 10 wallpaper uses a Windows logo with a twist, with a lime, actually. I'm just kidding. The logo is made entirely out of light. Microsoft used camera mapping techniques, lasers, and projectors in two custom installations in a San Francisco studio. Light beams out and around the edges of a sunbeam-like version of the Windows logo. This new wallpaper will start appearing on desktops once Windows 10 ships on July 29th. All right, round the horn. Who likes the new uh, lighty logo? And who will turn it off and go to a black desktop as soon as they install Windows 10? Justin? I think it looks pretty rad. I mean, as far as desktops go, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the desktops are like, you know, fashion or, or, or personal, uh, you know, preference. Like, it is very often an extension of your personality. So as far as a default interesting thing that shows off Windows' personality, I think it looks more forward-facing than, let's say, some of the fairly boring stock art that normally comes as, as a Windows desktop. So... Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's all right. I, for one, think it's a little lame. It just reminds me of the tiles that they put on your desktop anyway. If you're gonna do tiles or like have like little boxes, I've seen it before. This Windows 8 just was flat. Now it's tilted, so and they're not live tiles or anything, but a little bit of a I think a jab to people to go, yeah, there are your squares. Enjoy them. Right no there. logo. Bloomberg reports on major protests in the French cities of Paris, Marseille, and Lyon by taxi drivers opposing Uber's operation in the country. They've uh, been burning tires, blocked part of the ring road around Paris, overturned vehicles, fights were reported. Courtney Love was held hostage at one point. Not really held hostage, but police in riot gear at one point intervened using tear gas and roads into the Roissy airport were blocked and air travelers were forced to use the train if they wanted to actually get to the airport. France's interior minister, Bernard Casanueve, has called for a nationwide clampdown on Uberpop, arguing the service represents unfair competition. Meanwhile, Ars Technica reports that Uber has launched a ferry boat service called Uber Boat in Istanbul today, taking passengers across the Bosphorus Strait. So Uber is just basically they they they're they're on that honey badger tip, right? Like they don't care. <laughs> like like let, let let everybody else uh you know a riot in the streets. Uh you know the the French certainly have a rich history of being upset about things and 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 causing a protest about it. So uh this is I don't know. I mean like this is just kind of a bigger version of the same story we've heard about Uber coming to town and people getting mad about it, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't heard of people burning tires or, uh, you know, causing Courtney Love to escape on a motorcycle before uh, from from an Uber Pop uh, vehicle. So I, I think this is definitely a significant raising of the anger level here. Oh, certainly so. No, I mean, like, I'm not saying it's not news. It is news. Sure. But it, it's, you know, the, the, the song remains the same. The, the variations on, on this theme are that it's much bigger and much louder, but also at the same time, much more French, like in every single element of it. Like this, these, these kinds of protests, although for us, are something that d deserve to be covered on a tech news podcast, not exactly unique in, in, in France when it comes to labor protests, right? Like, like these, they're, they're not, this is, it's big, it's not beyond the pale. I guess, you know, what, what you're saying points me toward the idea that what we're seeing here is not that, there's anything particularly new about the protests or the anger with Uber, but that it is important enough to reach the level of a classic French strike. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, at least, no matter what, we all know that they were born ready to protest like that. I was born ready. Thank you. Ever wonder why the Amazon Echo's virtual assistant is called Alexa? That's because they're not the same thing. TechCrunch reports Amazon has freed Alexa to live on any device or app that will have her, and they're even giving her a little spending money. The Alexa API lets developers build support for Alexa into their apps. Alexa voice service can be integrated into hardware, and the Alexa fund is $100 million to support devs and gadget builders looking to build 
voice powered stuff. Uh, excellent move, Amazon. Alexa is good. She's not perfect. And one of the things that makes her less than perfect, I'm sorry, Alexa, is that, I think I activated her, uh, is that she can't do all the things you would want her to do. Well, the easiest way to make that happen is to put out an API, allow for hardware integration, and give some people some money to develop some cool new stuff. Here's a question. How many uh, disembodied voices do we need? Like you got, you got the OK Google, you got Siri, you got Alexa. Like I, I just, and I'm not saying that like one will die so the other might live, right? Competition, I'm man. Saying, I'm just curious as to like how many, where is this going to shake out? Does every how app How many personal assistants do we need? I, I, I don't know, know man. I want, I want multiple platforms. I don't want to, want to have only one platform to choose from. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm, I, again, this is not about the development. I think we should always be trying everything. I'm just curious in, as we go forward and understand that these places, that these services have a place in our lives, I wonder whether or not there will, uh, you know, at you know, five years from now, we're going to be regularly talking to three different AIs. Or are we going to be regularly talking to one different AI that oh, then does background yeah. stuff to uh, interact with other services? Like, I, I just don't know where in the UI we eventually land. Yeah, the folks over at Kentucky have seen that. They, they've checked out a lot of hubs when it comes to smart home technology because a lot of this stuff ends up really when you want to talk to your house and say, lights on or whatever you want to do, it's these hubs that talk to everything that makes things way better. So you could have things that work with Google, things that work with well, Google and Nest and whatever else they're doing, uh, HomeKit, and then Alexa because you just need one thing to talk to everybody. So that's going to be the real, I think, thing that's going to tie everything together. And we're going to have basically a hierarchy of assistants. Yeah, yeah I, I don't care which one I'm talking to at any given moment as long as it does what I want. I just don't want Siri to hit me up and say, don't ask me, that's Alexa's job. Passive aggressive API coming soon. <laughs> Maybe you should ask your friend Alexa. Oh, come on, baby, you know <laughs> I love you. Okay, Google. <laughs> Speaking of Apple, the New York Times reports Apple will pay two one-hundredths of a cent for each stream of a recording during the free trial of Apple Music. This is supposedly a similar rate to free tiers at other services. Although unlike other services, Taylor Swift, that's right, T-Swizzle herself, has agreed to allow new album 1989 to stream on Apple Music. So that feud is sort of over. All of this hoopla leads up to the launch of Apple Music on June 30th. The Beats 1 radio station launches that morning as well with Zane Lowe's interview of Eminem. That's the first one. Uh, All right, Justin. I know you got thoughts. Okay. Well, I made a joke, and it is a joke. It's not serious that uh, that, that that the Taylor Swift Tumblr was an inside job because this has this could not have turned out better for for Apple from where it was in that it reinforces that Apple is a place that is sympathetic to artists. It has made a big public relationship with maybe the biggest artist who had made the biggest think about whether or not she was going to put her music on a streaming service and today uh, makes a really big deal that this relationship is real and it is official and she wasn't just carping. This is definitely going to happen in 1989 will be on the, uh, the, the new service. But I don't really believe that. I mean, I think that that's it, it, it's a fun thing to talk about. You don't and really I, believe the on. conspiracy theory. You do yeah, believe I, that I, 89 will end up on the service. You're saying you well, don't believe that said, it was an inside job. Yeah, she said it will. I, I don't believe that it's going to be, that, that it was an inside job. I, ultimately, like, if Apple and Taylor Swift were that tight from the beginning to execute this uh, loose change-worthy kind of conspiracy, uh, <laughs> that she would have just performed at the announcement and made a big deal and said, I'm an artist. It really matters to me. Apple's gotten it right. Thank God. So here's what'll be funny. You don't agree to pay anybody anything, right? Like who would do that? And then I'll write an open letter, like pointing it out. And then you can be all like, oh, Taylor, honey, of course, we'll change our mind. And then I'll be the hero. You'll be the hero and everybody wins. And it'll have to come from Eddie Q's untucked shirt uh, uh, Twitter account, which you know just sounds like he was, you know, he, always, he perpetually looks like he's halfway through a rum runner, and he's just like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's his shtick. That's his thing. I love it. No, he's, yeah. he's, he's my fave. Uh, I ask, what do you think? Well, I don't I, think this honestly changes anything for my opinion of Apple Music, which is I'm not that interested. 
you know, if if this was timed better, like towards the launch on the 30th, then I would say conspiracy on, because it's the 25th and this stuff is shaking out now, and Apple still has time to gear up. I'm sure Apple did not like the fact that Taylor Swift was calling them out, because her music moves a lot of, well, not just sales, but a lot of streams, so you want to make sure you got her on board. And the thing is, with her falling in line, so to speak, because Apple's willing to pay, I'm sure other artists will be like, well, if she does, if she's okay with it, I'm okay with it, even though they might be screwing over other people who are much, much smaller than her. Yeah, the indie labels are over there saying, hold on, we started this conversation. This, this, this whole thing is not entirely Taylor Swift's doing. Uh, they're, out, they're out there saying that right now, and it's true. Uh, because, you know, Beggars, uh, Beggars Club, Beggars Group, uh, and Merlin were, were leading the charge against that free trial period. Anyway, everybody's happy now, except for the people who don't want the service like me. Who don't really care? We're not unhappy. Uh, DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com is where you can let us know if you want us to talk about a particular story. We get lots of great news tips there. For instance, Metal Freak flagged an Ars Technica write-up of an interesting broadband service provided by home security firm Vivint. It just sort of evolved out of user requests. They were installing home automation, home security, and people said, hey, do you do internet? And they're like, well, I guess we could. 100 megabit per second wireless service provided by identifying hub homes. So they give a hub home the service for free. Basically come in and say, hey, you want free internet service for life? Let us put a three antennas up on the top of your roof in exchange for the service. Uh, then uh, Vivint is receiving signals from a fiber-connected tower somewhere in the 27 gigahertz spectrum. Then those three antennas rebroadcast the service to homes in a 1,000-foot radius over a 5 gigahertz system. They say they can serve up to 128 homes. Software and hardware were designed by Vivint themselves because off-the-shelf stuff wasn't working for them, and they were trying to avoid interference because they're using that crowded 5 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, Job Broadkid's got an excellent article kind of going into the details. There have been some customers who weren't happy with the service. It, ha it had some bumps in the early days, some outages, uh, but it's a really intriguing way of going about providing wireless high-speed broadband to neighborhoods that's much more scalable than you usually hear about. Uh, the more this can happen and the faster it happens, the happier I will be. The idea of having a, a wireless broadband solution is in, in every way the kind of uh, emerald dagger uh, that I think uh, all consumers want in the face of uh, monopolies that require uh, people to dig trenches and put wires in the ground, which is something that can be and has been regulated within an inch of its life in terms of city ordinances and state ordinances. It makes it very cost prohibitive to have upstarts get in there. If Vivint is the first step in which other people look at this technology, either license it or come up with their own versions and make this a more crowded field, I think it solves so many of the problems that we understand very painfully in the modern realm of, uh, of, of, of home internet. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm okay. all for them continuing to tr try new things and, and provide new ways to give us more ISPs. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in. More the better. There's no such thing as too many cooks when it comes to uh, home ISPs. Textris sent us the Kurzweil AI report that Stanford University scientists have invented a low-cost 1.5-volt water splitter that uses a single a nickel-iron iron, sorry, nickel, uh, iron oxide ca catalyst to produce both hydrogen and oxygen gas for more than 200 hours continuously. The researchers believe that the device, described in, the nature, uh, in Nature Communications, could provide a renewable source for clean burning hydrogen fuel for transportation and industry. Man, at least uh, here in California, we're not all panicked about the water we're using. <laughs> yeah, just boil it off. I, I don't know. Would this work with seawater? I, I think it has to be fresh Maybe. water. Yeah, I think it would sure. be fresh water. Uh, but AA battery that can give you uh, an 82% efficiency, um, that's, that's a pretty nice advance there because one of the biggest issues uh, with hydrogen as a fuel source is transportation, but another issue is creation. Uh, and this would make the creation a lot more affordable anyway. Should I talk about the Corley? He sent us, a, or she sent us a, a new story here from R&D Magazine about a team led by Professor Debashis Chandra at University of Central Florida's Nanoscience Technology Center and College of Optics and Photonics. Very, very catchy name. Uh, they Go created, Knights. 
They've created the first full-color, flexible, thin film reflective display. Applied voltage changes in interaction between liquid crystal molecules and plasmon waves on the nanostructured metallic surface. In simple terms, it makes it reflect a different color of light, thus changing the appearance of the, the, of the actual color seems to change on the material. The display is only a few microns thick compared to a 100 micron thick human hair, so it's really, really, really thin. Professor Chandra said that it could change not only electronic displays, but camouflage, clothing, and more. Yeah. Uh, this is exceptional and as somebody who for one summer worked as a waiter at a Bennigan's right outside of UCF I say this is great just think your Bennigan's uniform could have changed colors at the click of a button mm -hmm. it would have made it a lot easier for me to uh, disguise my appearance as I told them that I really hadn't transferred to UCF and I was just there for the summer and had taken a job from somebody that they could have given it to otherwise. Oh, man. Uh, no, this is a fantastic uh, innovation. And and we hear a lot about, you know, wearable tech and, and programmable clothing. Uh, but this this seems to be a pretty significant advanced advance here. So thank you, the Corley, for sending that. Agblade submitted the Touch Arcade version of this story, but everybody is reporting this. Apple and Google uh, are both removing apps featuring the flag of the Army of Northern Virginia, commonly known as the Confederate battle flag. The flag has caused controversy because of its use by racist individuals and groups. I know you've heard about those stories. The apps being pulled have included some Civil War-based games, they use the flag to identify Southern soldiers, which has caused another much smaller controversy. I have to believe that this is an algorithm that's looking for representations of an image and just pulling every game associated with it. Don't you guys? Yeah. I don't think that there would be much of a doubt. I don't think that this is necessarily anything other than, you know, maybe even them going into their complaint bin of, of people who have complained about apps searching for a Confederate flag and, and maybe even deleting things uh, it, it, there. I don't know if there's, the, you know, much of a... This, this seems far more machete than scalpel in terms of, uh, you know, just larger decisions made by the app stores. I, I get a feeling that this is the kind of stuff that as we, uh, you know, as, as this conversation continues to evolve, that we'll probably see the Confederate flag in Civil War games, you know, going forward uh, in, in the same way that Wolfenstein, you know, still has the Nazi flag. Uh, and, you know, that, that is something that, uh, you know, is, is, is still a thing. So I, I'm curious to see where it goes. Uh, I, I, I just... This is a very important conversation uh, about about the Confederate flag that goes far beyond tech, and I really, I I I cringe when I read this story because I I just don't want to have an element of what I think to be a very important conversation be devolve into kind of Kotaku comment uh, name calling about free speech, you know, with five E's. Yeah, absolutely, and I I I'm very curious what Google and Apple will say uh, about the people who are raising the issue of, of historical representations and, and things like that. I mean, there, there are history books in these app stores. There are, there are historical exhibits uh, that are apps uh, from history museums in these stores. So I'm sure, I'm sure we will hear something from them one way or another, and I'm curious to see what they say. And that is a look at the headlines. All right, let's lighten the mood and talk about a treasure truck. Amazon is driving a store around on the back of a what the UK would call a lorry in Seattle, Washington. Uh, starting Saturday at 7 a.m. in Seattle, you'll be able to buy things from that truck. One product each day. You can order through the Amazon app. And this is definitely a way to get people to install the app because you can only order from the truck by using the app. Or if you see the truck in person, you can just walk up to it and buy stuff. You don't have to actually use the app if you see it. Uh, there will, like I said, will only be one hard-to-find, heavily discounted or limited edition item per day. The first product on Saturday will be a $99 Solstice Ball inflatable paddleboard, or sorry, Solstice Bali inflatable paddleboard. Apparently, that's like a 70% plus discount. Coming soon, uh, a votive candle holder, porterhouse steak, and a beach cruiser. 
Now, Ayaz, you were pretty excited when you watched the video of this thing. Yeah, I watched the video of this, and it, this just screams Amazon's ability to get people to think warm, fuzzy feelings about Amazon. Because they call this thing the treasure truck. It's not like it's Amazon on demand or Prime on demand or something silly or Amazon, you're just on the spot. It's treasure truck. So, of course, I'm instantly like, what is treasure truck? You watch the video, they're showing this truck that has LED lights around it that actually has like text scrolling on it to say, like, treasure truck, treasure truck. And what's inside this thing? And they're giving away some stuff at really low cost. It, it, when I saw it at first, I'm like, oh, it's Woot on wheels. That's what they're doing. They're doing a heavily discounted item, and they own Woot, mm -hmm. so why not do the same kind of thing? And they're drilling up more interest, not only in their, in their app, um, but in the video, one small thing that made me like, just completely crack up was they're showing, install the app, and they show it on an iPhone 6 and not a Fire Phone. Because even Amazon's like, ain't nobody using the Fire Phone. We're not going to even use it in a demo <laughs> for the Treasure Truck. But Treasure Truck... I think is it's also the, the idea that Amazon is keeps experimenting. They don't have physical stores yet. They have those lockers and stuff. Now they're getting on the road with their own truck. Well, how long before we start seeing crazier things from them? Well, how much of this is Amazon trying to uh, put their adrenaline into the idea of what you want right now is being driven around in a truck, you know, or being driven around in a car, and so we're thinking beyond it comes from a place and gets to you and we're thinking about a delivery driver to get it there instead how much you know amazon's amazing algorithms and predictive thought can say yeah no this neighborhood requires x amount of toothpaste uh, this re you know this amount of, of of these kind of like regular items and i think that it's something that uber's gotten into it's something that lyft has gotten into you've seen a lot of companies try to fill the need of of this stuff like postmates here in the bay area uh, Amazon seems like a natural player in this, and this seems like their big, fun way to just put a, a toe in that water and see, hey, if something's driving around your neighborhood, are you more likely to want it? Yeah, and Amazon, you know, they've got real razor-thin profit margins, so they don't mind spending some money to try something, even if it eats into their profits. And that's what this smacks of is, let's see if we put Woot on wheels what would happen? Uh, you know, will will it help drive app downloads? Will it help drive awareness of the brand? Will it drive people to buy more things from Amazon because they bought a porterhouse steak off the back of a truck uh, when they were, you know, downtown Seattle? Uh, I wonder if there's going to be any backlash against this. Uh, having just been up into Seattle, and I, and I know, Justin, you've been up there a few times as well. <laughs> there is There are mixed feelings about what Amazon's presence is in, in the north part of Seattle uh, is doing to the nature of the city. There's a lot of congestion and traffic there that wasn't there before. And now here's Amazon, the cause of that congestion, driving a truck around, take, <laughs> taking up space on the roads uh, and, and trying to sell you more of their stuff. I, I bet the tires get slashed once. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, uh, although, uh, you know, now the blood's on your hands, Tom, as you've called for violence against the <laughs> treasure not, truck. I am not encouraging that behavior. Let's be <laughs> clear. You should never slash anyone's tires. No, never, never, never do that. Uh, maybe. I think it's going to be hard narratively to, uh, to, to make the villain the guy driving a big flashing truck that's selling porterhouse steaks for, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. Uh, I, I don't... I, uh, in terms of the, the local element of it, obviously, that we've seen, not only in Seattle, but really, uh, I think it, it, it's become a very West Coast phenomenon to have an odd adversarial relationship with these tech empires that have not only become gigantic, but become institutions over the past 15 years. You certainly see that a lot in the Bay. What I wonder is, is this even their way of, of doing what Uber has done for years in hey, download our app and request free kitten snuggles and request, uh, you know, today we're doing uh, blueberry pancakes or, or we're doing cupcakes. Is you understanding that Amazon is where you buy the things you need? BioCal point. po points out that in uh, December they were granted a patent for anticipatory shipping. So this could be tied into that as well, I guess. 
Yeah, to the point that it, it would cause some kind of adversarial relationship with the people of Seattle. I was looking, I am just like started zooming in on the actual web page because it says that you have to go to meet the truck. It's not that the truck's going to come to you. So you have to go to the app, say I want this thing, and go meet the truck. And in the little uh, graphic, it actually shows it at the key arena. So it's not like it's going to be in the middle somewhere. It's going to go to a high traffic area anyway. So in theory... It's going to be by the Amazon campus so they can make a bunch of employees go spend their money there in the company store. It's going to be at the key arena, like you said, mm -hmm. which is far farther to the south. Where else is it going to be? Uh, well, that's the only thing I see right there, and it's showing that the, S the Seattle Children's Muse Museum is right near Key Arena. I'm not familiar with Seattle that well. I could just imagine the kid appearance that, like, it's almost the ice cream truck, right? You're an adult. It's like, what's on Amazon's truck? Like, that's <laughs> the load of candle truck is here. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm telling you, there's going to be people chasing down this truck. I don't think they're going to try to slash the tires because it's got a little bit of the food truck feel, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's another thing because when you look at the truck that they have actually outfitted, it doesn't look like a standard truck it looks like almost a shop on wheels almost looks like a, um, a like like a trailer it's more of a trailer looking thing it looks like a little room and so I'm really curious how it's gonna look when they open it up if they get enough attention and yeah you're right it probably could cause some issues in the town but it's more of a tester and I think that not just driving app uh, downloads but to get people to get excited to part with money Amazon loves doing that so they I think this is another way to do it do we think this leads to them creating a retail store? Uh, back in March, there were a bunch of stories about a patent Amazon applied for for a retail outlet. It was all bundled in with a patent about a shipping outlet, but part of the use case, they said, was it could be used as a retail outlet where you walk in, they use facial recognition to link you to your Amazon account, uh, presumably, uh, and then you can just pick up things that are tagged with RFID, walk out of the store, no cashiers necessary. Yeah, no. Would be <laughs> I don't think that this has anything to do with that. All right, fine. You're probably uh, fine. Well, and, and I, I, except to say that Amazon is, uh, you, know, you know, Jeff Bezos is ruthlessly efficient when it comes to trying to innovate. And they, by the way, need to be. Like you, you alluded to before, the biggest thing when you follow Amazon, especially on a, on a podcast like this or for business, is that they sell everything for $12 and it costs them $11.98 to buy it. Like they are making and ship it to you. Like they are making so, so thin uh, margin wise on everything that they sell that they need to be at the forefront of figuring out how and why you want to buy things. This is, and I'm going to take a wild guess. This is nothing more than Amazon doing a fun little thing in their hometown that may or may not become, you know, a, 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 a local kitschy kind of legend uh, when everybody talks about, oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> where'd you get that paddleboard? Oh, it was a treasure truck thing. Uh, but I don't, I don't quite know if, if I, I, I would put more money on the store kind of just being another thing that they want to do as they try to figure out ways that they can beef up their distribution network than this, you know, the, the, the treasure truck being a big demand thing that people want in their own hometown. I think the store is an, it's an eventuality. At some point when the, all the laws are all in line and they basically are like, fine, we'll pay you taxes, whatever. And they can be wherever they want. I'm going to go off on a crazy limb that this is going to lead to like an Amazon airline. So that way they can have the cargo in the actual plane and you're paying to be on it. And it's like the treasure plane. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> There's your drone service that they were t saying they're going to launch by the end of the year right there. It's much fun. larger than we thought. It's not yeah. the little... It's those kind of un unmanned aerial vehicles. I get it. It's just dropping porterhouse steaks and votive candle holders across the land. All right. Uh, pick of the day comes from Andy, who says, I'm from Connecticut. I believe you, Andy. He says, I thought I'd point out a great two-factor authentication tool that works with LastPass. You know, they've been in the news uh, for that, called Duo. Duo at duosecurity.com is two-factor authentication, works with your mobile device, gives you quick access to a second-factor approval, works with a lot of apps, easy to set up with LastPass, supports the fingerprint reader on your phone, and free for personal use. They recently announced Apple Watch compatibility, so you can authenticate a second factor on your watch if you're inclined. And Andy says, I set up Duo at work as an alternative to RSA hard tokens, and it's been a big hit with everybody who's tried it. You can send up PIN codes as an alternate to the device should you not have your phone, or it can call a phone number you designate and read you your PIN as a backup. There are lots of other security features and options for the enterprise that are neat, so check it out. And they're part of Project FIDO, which is that project a consortium of lots of companies that are trying to figure out how to get rid of passwords so that we have better ways to authenticate. So thank you for the pick. Duosecurity.com. 
Andy's pick for today, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. That's where they are. Got a message from Brandon. He's a co-executive producer of the show. Thank you, boss. Says, just wanted to ring in on the Windows 10 retail USB rumor that was brought up Wednesday. I work on the software buying team for a large U.S. retailer and have not heard anything about these alleged USBs. He says, though the USB format makes sense for Ultrabooks and 2-in-1 hybrid devices, if the prices are the same as the list prices, which is $120 for home and $100 or $200 uh, for Pro, he's like, that doesn't seem to make sense for a format switch from CDs to USBs, or rather DVDs to USBs. Do uh, you guys buy it? Are we going to see box copies of Windows 10 on USB? Kind of makes sense to me. I think you have to do it, because, I mean, if you have Ultrabooks and the movement of, of essentially is no optical drives on anything. So if you just sell them a disc and they're like, well, what am I doing with this? But then again, who goes out and buys a retail copy of Windows anymore? Like, it, you buy it with the PC or you get an OEM version. So you kind of know what you're doing. So maybe, I'm thinking USB just because it makes it a lot simpler for modern people. Because if you want to sell it, like, what is this disk for? Just... Yeah, who needs to clean install Windows 10 that would need to buy a physical copy of Windows 10? That audience apparently might exist, but I don't know who they are. Yeah, and and also any decisions that Microsoft has to be made has to make really has to be made in pretty large scale, right? Like you know, there's there there is kind of just some mechanisms there that that might slow down that. But I mean, it, it makes sense to me. I mean, I don't know the last time I saw an optical drive on uh, you know any kind of uh, non desktop computer. If they're going to do it at all, right? It makes sense to put it on USB. And this rumor came out of Germany, so there may be something with the German market that that we're not seeing uh, that would make it clearer that they would need a boxed copy of it. The German? Yeah. From Mike, he says, I think Lexus creating a hoverboard is more of a research endeavor into new forms of automotive suspensions. Cars already use magnets today to create better suspensions for racing or maybe comfort, so this could be research towards that. This could be something they are researching for a race car or their Lexus LF, a rich boy toy. And he's got an article from Jalopnik about how magnets are being used in the Camaro uh, I don't know, is that the ZJ one? I can't read that, but uh, they're using it in a Camaro to improve the suspension there. So I think that's a pretty clever insight that, yeah, sure, we get a lot of marketing punch out of telling people we're making a hoverboard, but use the technology as a, as in our suspensions. The Camaro ZL one, thank you. Well, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, no, no, sorry, it's, uh, it's, go ahead. Yeah, I, th I think it's a really great point because when I saw this Lexus thing, I'm like, well, it doesn't seem like it's Lexus's move into the, you know, hey, dudes, you can go cert you can go skateboarding. Like, it's not that, like, pivot. It, it makes a lot more sense for suspension, uh, and especially since Lexus, they, they do a lot of work with racing. So this would make a lot of sense when it comes to how to make their rides better, and that's that actually puts everything in perspective, I think. It also is, you know, welcome to 2015, Every brand wants to be cool. Every brand wants to be able to own Twitter for a day if they can because there is either imagined or real a benefit for their bottom line if they can not look like a soulless entity that is just there to sell you something. So, you know, if, if this is something that their engineers did, you know, what does it cost them to put a fun little music or a fun little video together and, and, and put it out there? And we will now think of Lexus as just a little bit more rad than they did the day before. Yeah. Blow a kiss, fire again. And that's it for this episode of the rad new Daily Tech News Show. Mm. Uh, I, as Actar, pleasure as always. Folks can find you at CNET.com. They can always find you on the Guys from Queens Network as well. What, what do you got going on to tell folks about? Well, you could check out CNET.com. I've got top five. I do net picks. There's a new one coming out after I, I look at the video in a couple minutes. Um, you could go to GFQNetwork.com where I've got lots of interviews. Quest for Peace, that's a show I do where I try to figure out inner peace, which sounds like a joke, but it's something I've been seriously looking into for several years. And i got to promote Podcast Without Pretense because it's awesome. Go see that at GFQNetwork.com. In fact, we got uh, Jonathan Strickland on the show tomorrow. Oh, one of, my, one of my good friends, and he does tech stuff. I'll promote that because I've been on it twice, and it's a great show. I listen to it just for fun. Tech stuff. Check all that stuff out, and then follow him on Twitter, twitter.com slash I-Y-A-Z. You can also follow Justin Robert Young, twitter.com slash Justin R. Young. What do you got going on these days, Jerry? 
Well, besides, of course, admiring the amazing talents of one I as Akhtar, who is always the best, uh, I have uh, Night Attack, which uh, this week was a European-themed episode. We had uh, your friend of mine, Will Harris, on. Uh, we did it uh, at a Euro-friendly time. Brian was actually out in France, uh, made it out before the, the cab strikes uh, from con uh, for, for a big convention out there. So go ahead and check that out. Also, uh, the jury show, J-U-R-Y. Go to jurytalks.com. It's a one mic show where I just talk a lot. It's, it's interesting, too. He doesn't make it sound like it, but it's actually really interesting because he talks about cool stuff. And the mind of jury is fascinating. So go check that out. Also, thanks to our bosses, dailytechnewsshow.com slash support is the way to support this show. If you want to keep us going forward, onward, and upward, you can find our Patreon link there, patreon.com slash acedetect. Uh, you can find a PayPal thing. You can find the dailytechnewsshow.com store. If you want a Daily Tech News Show sticker or a shirt or something like that, uh, we have a store full of that stuff as well. So go go wear the logo. Uh, you know, Mustafa from the Polar Cap made that for us to display. Uh, and so if you would like to display it, that's the way to do it. Dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. 5,088 patrons. You get you guys are awesome. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can call us 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday, 430 Eastern at player.alphageekradio.com. Visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. As I mentioned, Jonathan Strickland with us tomorrow, along with Len Peralta illustrating the show. Talk to you then. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Boom! Great show. What should we call it? I have thoughts. Hey, Jenny Zier. I made it. I made it back. Uh, Jenny, where were you? Uh, I was at a meeting of faculty uh, on the other side of the hill, and then I went over the hill and came back home because I didn't have any headsets. It's all a very fascinating story. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, I'm just going to give you the show titles okay. Uh, okay number five with five or number one with five votes is you vote there is Alexa still active oh wait I just activated Alexa Alexa stop <laughs> is, that the, is that the full title because I like that no <laughs> because Tom Absolutely. actually said the same almost the same exact same thing <laughs> Um, you guys actually activated her earlier uh, during your show, and I was like, who's talking? Well, I just set it up today. I'm sorry. I didn't understand that request. Uh, <laughs> um, Yahoo is the new ask. Ouch. Just voted for it. Uh, Apple lowers Confederate flag. Wi-Fi calling screen of death. Um, let there be Windows light. And my shirt is 1080p. Which I kind of like. Grand Theft Uber. Oh, Grand Theft Uber, yeah. Um, this Oracle is a Yahoo. Tre treasure Truck Tales Tempt Throngs. Oh, I've always been for some active alliteration. Points for, for alliteration, yeah. Justin, what do you like? Uh, let me go. Nothing. He didn't like any of it. He's just being polite. Showbot. Showbot. Um, mm, Road my Warrior shirt Prime. Is 1080p Ooh, is pretty Road good. Warrior Prime. Tears is, is very funny to me. Steeped in Tears is funny? I like Steeped in Tears. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, and then, of course, because alliteration is the machine gun of grammar. I very much appreciate Treasure Truck Tales Tempt Thrall. It's got a nice 1920s headline feel. What do you think, I have? I think... The, I like the third one. I have no idea which ones are which right now. Yahoo is the new ask is the third one right now. Oh, that's not so good. Why did I say that? I'm no longer perfect, Tom. I've screwed up. Ah! Well, it was a good run, I asked. It was, yeah, it was a good 35-minute uh, run. <laughs> <laughs> The Yahoo Oracle. Uh, Ask, by the way, uh, has their big headquarters right downtown in Oakland. I always see that. Yeah, they're they're the big name on a on a billboard or on a, a skyscraper in Oakland. 
it's kind of awesome. It still sort of amazes me that there is an ask.com that exists and has a building and people that you go to that. You can thank home. Barry Diller for that. Yeah, no, I was, uh, who was it? Brett was telling me that Ask is just an example of a company that for whatever reason just makes X amount of money per year. They literally do nothing to advance it and they are going to ride this until the wheels, they're all just content to, to cash checks until the gravy train comes fully to a stop. Like, like growth, just, overrated. It's just a ghost ship of of money, and then they're like they're you know, very. That, you know, Title. You, it's it's you know it, that's actually not a bad way to go. I mean, granted, you don't really advance anywhere, but at the same time, it's a uh, you know you, you do have a uh, at least a definable source of income, and you can say, well, oh, okay, yeah. you know what I mean. It's like no, saying it, it's like saying to a mom and pop like corner stores like oh you guys aren't expanding you aren't growing <laughs> your business it's like they're happy selling sandwiches and sodas to like the college kids during lunch and that covers all their expenses and then they take the time off when they have it and go fishing or or trip somewhere dude it, I mean it, it's certainly something that is anthemic to the valley kind of approach to it. But uh, it is kind of the rule of business, you know. As long as business has been around, as if you're making money and you can not do anything, then just kind of keep not doing stuff and continue to make money as long as it's not gonna crash into the rocks. It, it, it's funny though, because I was—I uh, forget who I was talking to—but I was explaining why no startup uh, ever just makes a hundred thousand dollars a year forever. You know, like there's no just like small town. You know, like oh yeah, well you know we make. We make a decent living. You know, we make three hundred thousand dollars a year, and we're happy about it. We can pay two employees. It's a fun time. It's because anything that gets money, if you have made any money, you are scaling up, so you can make, you can have a shot to make a billion. And if you don't, then uh, it, it does. It's not worth it. They will keep scaling you until you break, because all that matters is that you either make a bunch of money or you sell out. I feel That's our mission. I feel terrific. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go with Treasure Truck Tales Tempt Throngs because yeah. I need some alliteration to cheer me up now. Oh, You'll have a billion one day, Tom. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> so wait, what was U-Boat? Why was U-Boat a thing? I don't know. I don't know. It I was, missed that I one. TV Seagun, explain, explain, explain what U-Boat is. U-Boat. There was a boat reference. Wasn't there? Or was that yesterday? They all oh, run really? together for me now. I also like, here are your squares. Enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. So, so Justin, I know that you, you held back uh, and, and you were reasonable and fact-based uh, in your evaluation of the inside job that was Apple Music, but it's safe space now, man. I mean, all right. So, yeah, it, it, because here's the problem is, is you know, that wasn't the place or the time. I can't just come on the Daily Tech News show. You've entrusted me to show a different element of my personality that I, ne I don't really get a chance to do on a lot of other shows where I could dust off my degree from the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications located in Syracuse, New York. Uh, but when, when you really break it down, what you got to focus on is the fact that Taylor Swift, okay, writes a, a, a tumblog right about apple music so here we go taylor swift apple music taylor swift apple music and you think that that's a connection uh-uh uh-uh it's on it it's on a tumblog right what's tumble log what what tumblr is uh what they're owned by yahoo marissa meyer runs yahoo what did marissa meyer do today marissa meyer went and said that they're gonna have their search in with javascript so now where does javascript get worked in you think that maybe it's just gonna be marissa meyer and taylor swift got into a room and said hey how is this apple music gonna thing go down meanwhile javascript comes in and says i think that we need to make sure that all these indie artists get paid because i like to enjoy music that i here hear at a bar one day. Okay, so JavaScript comes in and says that's what's going to go down. So Marissa Meyer goes back to Taylor Swift. She writes on a tumble log. Next thing you know, Eddie Q's halfway through a rum runner, and his phone goes off, and he says, what the hell's going on? Falls into the pool, wakes up, and says, okay, let's go ahead and get Taylor Swift on Apple Music. Oh, my God. Bravo. I like it. 
But it was just Java. Yeah, Taylor, I'll, I'll add to your... I <laughs> like that Roger went immediately for the correction. No, wait, it was wait, just wait. Java, uh, not JavaScript. I have a... That, Which is true. Uh, IAS, not that, me. That was, was that IAS? Oh, well, well done. You know, I, I'm negative, but I'm not. <laughs> Did you know that Taylor Swift performed at Yahoo in like 2007 in one of their things? Hey! All the way... There's pictures of it on the internet. Is so this six this degrees is, of Taylor Swift? There could be a deeper connection. You want 1989 will rise again. Pepe Silva. Pepe Silva. I keep seeing this name. Pepe Silva. <laughs> it's a compelling case. And I think at this point, we really need someone from Yahoo or Apple or Taylor Swift's uh, management to respond. Exactly. Oh yeah, by the way, speaking of uh, just a, an, an, an example of uh, us having a, a, a perilous uh, legal position in front of us, uh, the certainly not endorsed by either Microsoft or the WWE uh, Sacha Mania shirts are now available <laughs> on Teespring. So if you are a fan of Sacha Nadella and do indeed believe that Sacha Mania is running wild, uh, then you can go ahead and get those shirts before they get shut down by Teespring or sued into oblivion. Mm. Teespring it up, folks. Is there any way we risk putting those in the DTNS store? No. No. <laughs> no, no, you don't. People want to do it and have it just to be funny. I yeah. think it's funny enough if we can... Let's just say that the DTNS logo that may or may not appear on those shirts is certainly unauthorized by us. Yes. No, we will join in suing. We will join the... <laughs> we will just join. Have, just on the bottom, of the, the very, very bottom, just make sure the DTNS, I have like an asterisk at the top that says DTNS, but to have... DTNS stand for something totally different. Like, okay, this is a new and different Microsoft, though. Let's just thought experiment here. What if they embrace it? What if they're like, we think this is great? What if at the next public appearance you see Satya Nadella wearing one? I think, yeah, he should come out, and then there should be somebody that <laughs> complains about uh, the new background, the new wallpaper, and he just points at him and goes, you! And then rips off the, you know, he. Sacha's out, and, and he's ripping off his shirt, and it's going to be great. Goes to all four corners of the of the stage, although I guess one would be just be like kind of the set. Okay, I, tries I, to listen, I did the reverse the anagram for it. Okay, so, so the DTNS on the shirt stands for Dis T-Shirt Now Sachas. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, check it out, teespring.com slash satyamania. We can't endorse it. I'm definitely it, not buying one right now. But it's freedom of information that it is there, available in large. I mean, you shouldn't look personally. Yeah, here we go. Ten minutes. Definitely not typing in all of my address. No, so I can no buy of course it. you wouldn't. You know would the. Be... You know, it just occurred to me the whole Windows 10 logo, the new wallpaper. Totally reminds me of John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. When you have The Thing ripped... The, oh, that's the, a good the call. Really? I did a poltergeist one already where there's a little girl touching the window. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool thing. I, I never want a Windows logo staring at me in the face every day. No, I don't care how cool it is. That's my, that's my, my real position on it. Again, that's the thing, though, is like... All of our backgrounds, all of our wallpapers on our on our desktop are a reflection of our personality. And so what they want to do is show a reflection of their personality. It's never been difficult to change the wallpaper. Everybody always does it. Even my mom changes the wallpaper on her computer. So it's like, this is just there like, hey, look at what we did. No, it, it's just pinning it up to your refrigerator. It's it's their attempt at flourish. Yeah. Flair. <laughs> One Flair. might even say. Flair. How much flair do you have on your desktop, Jenny? We have a, uh, a minima, minimum amount of flair we require here at Daily Tech News right. Show. I actually am still closing windows to try to see my desktop. I don't think I've seen my desktop in years. Windows D on a Windows machine will show you that desktop right away. We know people at Microsoft, right? Like, if we wanted to get a Sacha Mania t-shirt to Sacha Nadella, like, that, that wouldn't be impossible, right? I don't it do might be ill-advised for their career, but, yeah. I don't Probably really do know. It. I mean, I was on their campus a couple weeks ago. I mean, ago. it's, it, it's complimentary. We could just mail like, it to them. Like, 
Yeah, you could just mail it. At worst, he'd be like... But that's, I think what Justin's going is some one better, which is hand-delivered. Well, or just, you know, just know somebody who knows his assistant. Like, and right? just says, hey, look, there's a thing on the internet. They, they think it's really funny. They like you know, that, that you've come in and made a bunch of changes that uh, have gotten people excited. They've joked that it's Sacha Mania, like Hulkamania. They made a shirt, so here's the shirt. Oh, that is very other. nice. Thank you. Be like, and that's that it. In the sack with the other ones. <laughs> with all the other novelty shirts people have made about so my wait, name. Who's, who's this mean gene then? He needs a mean gene. And so who's, and <laughs> who does he give a handshake to? Is it Steve Ballmer every now and then when they form the Mega Powers? Oh, yeah. It's like, ah. No, 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 no. The Mega, the mega Powers has to be, uh, I mean, the, the greatest rival would be Google, right? Like that would be, if, if, if Microsoft <laughs> and Google... Yeah, like Google goes, thinking, 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 and then they're like, yeah. okay, I could see it, I could see it, they got stars. Um, I heard what you said about me, Sacha, yeah. Where have we gone? Where have we gone? <laughs> I don't know, now, where, where haven't we gone? I think about who the mean gene is. The, who, who's the friendly, the best friendly interviewer for Microsoft? Paul Thorat. Oh, uh, uh, Thorat. Larry Ribb. Uh, uh, Major Nelson. Herb? Oh, Herb, oh sorry. Yeah. Let me like, tell you something, Major. Larry Rib. It sounds like a. <laughs> sorry, Larry. <laughs> sorry, Larry. I don't know why I said that. I was imagining it spelled out. Larry Herb. Herb. Not Herb either. He's Major Nelson. Let's just call him that. That's why he took that name. <laughs> uh, just trying to think who else he's surrounded by in all of his days, Hulk Hogan. I wonder if he has uh, security guards. Yeah, oh, I don't sure. think the cannon suggests. All, all major that CEOs. Make have. it. <laughs> T-shirt cannon, I think Sachi will be like pushed on the ground. <laughs> That'd be a bad thing. I just wanted to give him a shirt. What if you just hired a skyrider? I got you. Sachi Mania in the sky. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Sachi Mania is running wild, <laughs> right? Uh, do we know any skyriders? <laughs> there has to be like throw that in your bin. You don't own the sky, Sachi. <laughs> where can you take it from us? You can't take the sky from us. Even, but you do. But he does have a window to the sky. <gasps> By the way, stay tuned for the Gizwiz immediately following the Thrilla in Sacha Nadella. I, I, that that one seems a little. Weird. Oh, why don't you give him a Sacha Mania in a thing of Nutella? I don't know. And Sriracha. <laughs> the Thrilla Sacha. in Nadella. Sriracha. Sacha. Sriracha. Uh, Sriracha. Sriracha. Nutella. Nutella. All right. Hey. Well, you know, I'm starting to think that this show is losing its news value. <laughs> I don't know why you would say that, uh, but I am out of the post. Oh. And, and Justin's After, right. For whatever reason, Sriracha Nutella is the one that is equally the funniest thing that's ever been said on this show and the signal that we need to end it. Like, <laughs> that, was, that was the big closing number. It's hot. It's oh. sweet. It's coming up after the Gizwiz.